Here now, the Heritage Foundation Vice President of National Security uh, and Foreign Policy. Jim, you were with us earlier. So just reacting to what we're seeing on the ground in Israel and the strife about the fact that uh, this, this weapon sale um, is, is in fact moving forward. Well, in this part of the world, actions speak way louder than words. So this kind of support is absolutely crucial. So the world knows the United States has Israel's back. And so Israel has the right to uh, defend itself. I think we've got to be cautious here about if you prematurely get to the end, of, push for the end of hostilities before Hamas has paid a terrible price for this. And if global pressure builds against Iran, what you could what you could actually do is perpetuate another intifada that could last for years. So I, I think we've got to be really cautious here about what we're asking for. An, an emboldened Hamas that feels like came out of this a winner, they might start violence that might never end, at least right. for months or years. And, and it and can be terrible for the region. That's what's so interesting to me is the administration is saying, well, we're trying to help Israel and, and this is how we're trying to do it. But wouldn't you want there to be a situation where you have a calmer, you know, more stable Middle East, which we had under the previous administration, making strides there and also presenting itself as, you know, strong enough to stand up to the bullies in the region, Iran, backing Hamas, backing Hezbollah, two of the biggest disruptors. And so you say to yourself, you know, this is kind of like another situation that we have at the border where the Biden administration is just basically appearing weak. And so people are taking advantage. I think there's no question that you have to ask why the administration made such radical departures from policies that were obviously working to go back to policies that were obviously not working. You know, for example, they just released like $200 million through the United Nations that would go directly to groups like Hamas, who we know funnel that money off to build rockets and tunnels. And literally Hamas's thank you for that was to try to murder Israeli citizens and structure a war so they kill Palestinian children. Um, the, look at look at Iran. Since the United States tried to engage with Iran, Iran has become more aggressive. Iran is the number one cheerleader for Hamas to be in the streets trying to murder Israeli c civilians and, and, and indifferent to the, the death and the suffering of Palestinians. So I'm not saying that this happened because of the Biden administration, but the Biden administration actions, which rolled back literally everything positive in the last four years, I mean, look at the face of it. We've gone from a region that was heading towards peace and prosperity with a contained Iran and weakened surrogates. And in, in literally in three months, we've turned that scenario on its head. Jim, you know more about this than I do, but the only way that you're going to have an impact on the Iranian regime to disable it, to dismember it to a certain degree, is to, with financial sanctions, right? And they were starting to work. And that's why Iran is so, um, you know, angrier than ever, if you will, and, and taking these opportunities now to lash out um, essentially at the rest of the world. Well, the, the sanctions really hamstrung, hamstrung Iran and really limited their ability to support their surrogates, which is crucial. But, but the, real, the real golden ring here was the Abraham Accords and the idea of bringing Arabs and Israelis together and that to have peace and security and economic stability and be a real bulwark against Iranian influence that could last for generations. That was the real goal. And we were making real strides on that. And, and the Hamas attacks are in part absolutely designed to try to undermine that normalization process and have a region that's divided because that is better for Iran. And I really think the administration, by not focusing on pressing ahead with the Abraham Accords and containing Iran, made a huge strategic error. And and the violence that you're seeing in part as a result of that. Yeah, and oh, by the way, we're in a situation where the administration is changing its policies on energy as well, and we're seeing our energy prices go up, and we may be dependent on the Middle East once again. That would play into Iran's hand as well, but that's a separate conversation. Jim, always great to see you. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.